89.9 KMOJ FM and KMOJ HD1 Minneapolis St. Paul. Bringing unity to the community. 89.9 KMOJ, the people's station. 89.9 KMOJ, it's Glam Life, and <laughs> you are now ready to tune in to Minneapolis 360 with one of my favoriteest people in the Twin Cities, Mr. Anthony Taylor. How are you today, Anthony? I'm cold, Kim. I mean, let's just keep it. It is cold. I ain't going to lie. I was in Atlanta last week, and when I came back the other night, I said, oh, oh my God, this is brutal. You just wanted to stay, didn't you? I was mad. I ain't going to lie. Yeah, that's bad. We, we get mad a, a lot around here. And the crazy thing about it in Minneapolis, you know, we love to talk about the weather. It makes, I think, me and Kim's both our attitudes what it is, and it's really like 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 joyful and happy, but mm -hmm. weather can change that, can it, Kim? It really can. But you know what, bro? It is sunny outside today. So as I look to the right and I'm able to look out on Broadway and I see the sun shining, that does make me happier. Okay, yeah. It, it, it makes me happy till you go outside. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's a whole different ball game. Right. <laughs> but other than that, Kim, I feel blessed. I feel great. It's always you know, to be on this uh, program on Camo J riding shotgun with you on Minneapolis Aww. 360. So, uh, sis, I'm good. I'm That's good. That's wonderful. And I am so happy to, to, to be on today, y'all, because, and again, let me start over. It seemed like, you know, when me and Kim get together, it's always family. So we do our check-in. Right. So y'all have, y'all understand we that. We got to catch up. We got to catch <laughs> up. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, but one of the things that I'm, I'm really happy for uh, Minneapolis uh, and being on Minneapolis 360, I am uh, the host, Anthony Taylor from Neighborhood and Community Relations, is this is something that I've been kind of informed about a while, and it's, it's digital equity, right? And what people talk about digital equity, it really means Internet access, right? Internet access is probably one of the, the most uh, important things that we could have, especially in a environment, in a world that a lot of us had to move around virtually, right? So everybody had to either work from home because of COVID. Uh, kids had to work from school, from home to go to school because of COVID. But there's a, there's a divide in our community and there's around 31,000 households who lack internet access. And it's a shame because that's how we've been moving around for an almost you know, two and a half years, it seems like, going on three really with March with COVID. But I got somebody I want to uh, bring on, the, on our show today to talk about the digital divide, how we can offer free internet access to households in the community. And he'll give all the information around that. Now, I'll give him his, his shine when he gets on. But I really want folks to tune in to kind of understand what we're talking about. This is an important topic. So if you are a person who does not have internet access, has children at home who's been struggling with internet access, this is a way that we can get free internet access with PCs for people. And I'll bring him on here shortly. But like I kind of always do, Minneapolis, is to give a really quick update on our fight against COVID. You know, for a while, I, I, I stopped giving out the numbers because a lot of times I think, you know, there was uh, a lot of COVID fatigue. But generally speaking, Minneapolis, our rates are going down. So I just want to make sure Yay. that you kind of. Yeah, I know that man. <laughs> it's going down, Minneapolis. And it's a lot of because of what the work that, that our community has done. However, however, it is still here. And regardless of the fatigue, to make sure that we mask up. One thing I want to tell folks is that there are now uh, free at-home COVID test kits provided by the federal government. So uh, if you need an in-home test kit to order those, please go to covidtests.gov. That's a, a great place to be able to get some free COVID tests. But also here's some free vaccination information that I want to give folks that are available at Hiawatha Academy's. Uh, Northrop Campus Gym, right? So you go to the Hiawatha Academy's gym. The address is 4640 17th a uh, Avenue South. Open from 11 to 2 on February 6th, right? So you're able to go and get some free uh, vaccinations, the Pfizer and the Moderna, and, and uh, our first doses that you can get. Uh, Walk-ins are available. You can also get 
Uh, you can register as well. You want to go to mn.gov to the vaccine, uh, vaccine locator that you can find that. Uh, but please, folks, just understand that we are doing a great job. Uh, a lot of places are going back to work. So I just want to make sure that I get that public service announcement out there uh, about COVID, right? So um, with that being said, and I think folks really wanted to get into this conversation, and I want to hurry up and dig into it, too, uh, because of a 30-minute show. I want to bring on Chris Cairo. He's the Managing Director for PCs for People, uh, talking about digital equity, talking about free Internet access. Please, Chris, welcome uh, to Minneapolis 360. How you doing today? Good, Anthony, and I really appreciate you having me on your show. Chris, are you there? Yep. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, sir. How you doing? I'm doing good, Anthony. Um, and thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate you having us on the show. Ab absolutely. And, and there's a, a lot of topics that I'm really excited about over the course of uh, my two or three years with, uh, with this radio show in KMOJ. And our, our whole focus is helping our community, right, and giving folks information, how to access information, how to protect family and community. And you're with PCs for People. So talk a little bit about your organization. And I know there's a lot of people in our community that are really familiar with PCs for People. Thanks for the opportunity. I always love talking about our organization because I believe we do good work. PC for People started as a nonprofit oh, over 17 years ago here in Minnesota. Now we're operating in over seven states with the Twin Cities as our headquarters still and our largest operation. Simply, Anthony, our mission is to provide low-cost computers and affordable Internet to those families and individuals that are within 200% of the poverty line. This is how we bridge the digital divide that you mentioned earlier. And you're right, it's a big divide. Last year in 2021, we distributed over 53,000 computers. And that's thanks to our partner organizations, government agencies, and the different businesses that donate their end of life cycle computers to us, which we then refurbish and are able to use in the mission. Last year, we also connected over 19,000 new homes to the Internet, primarily through hotspot programs, which are in partnership with some of the national carriers. But within the last year, we also became a wireless Internet service provider to be able to connect families through our LTE network. And this new opportunity will provide affordable broadband access um, here in Minneapolis, through primarily the installation of LTE equipment on rooftops, which is going to provide broadband coverage to homes within about a mile radius of our equipment. This equipment will be installed, and it will be operated by PCs for People. Talking with Chris Cairo, uh, Managing Director from uh, PCs for People, and this is probably the easiest question I'm going to ask you uh, during this time, Chris, and just explain you know, why is Internet access so important? Why is digital equity? Uh, and you talked about a lot of those uh, statistics that you talked about earlier in your answer. But why is this so important? That's that's a great question. Um, I think the pandemic highlighted a number of problem areas around digital divide and digital Absolutely. equity. One of the most pressing issues was, and I'm not saying it's the issue, but one of the most pressing issues is around kids in schooling, both their need to have computers at home and their need to have Internet access to allow them to, one, participate in classes when we went virtual, and also just to be able to access those homework assignments that are now online. I thought, Anthony, that one of the saddest stories I heard during the pandemic was these kids sitting in front of a Taco Bell to get free Internet uh, Wi-Fi access, right? That should not happen in this day and age. So that's one issue. Another issue was that with so many people thrown out of work during the pandemic, the need for job searching and applying for unemployment online became a big issue. You know, back in my day, we relied on the newspaper and the unemployment section but now you have to connect online to sites like Indeed 
or you have to be able to submit your resume or apply for a job directly on a company website. You have to be connected digitally. Third, I would highlight digital health. Whether it's a virtual doctor visit, filling out medical claims, researching your medical issues, and getting advice, access to the Internet these days in the world of health is a necessity. It's no longer a luxury. It's a necessity. And then there's things like just pure conveniences like online banking or ordering groceries, online shopping, and getting news, right? All these are part of today's digital world, and that's the world we're living in. And lastly, and very important, is the ability simply to keep in touch with and stay connected with family and friends. You know, that combats isolation, and I received this wonderful letter from a woman whose brother had access through one of our hotspot internet programs. Um, He was disabled, and she said it was a godsend to him, a lifeline to him to the outside world. That we want to make sure everyone has, and that's why we're working so hard to bridge the digital gap. Man, Chris, I mean, you hit on a a, a lot of great points, and I I just want to unpack a couple of those. And, and folks, if you've got questions for for Chris, please call 612-377-3456. And you're absolutely right. And and I think the the pandemic, like you said, just highlighted a lot of that. And and even those those kids uh, at the Taco Bell in the parking lot that had to go in there to access the Internet, we forget that the, all the libraries were closed too, right? So all the libraries exactly. were, were closed as well. So folks who didn't have internet access could go to the library and, and post up and do all of their work, all of their applications for their unemployment, for jobs and everything. And that was just gone like, like in the second with the pandemic. So I'm glad that you highlighted that, Chris, because I, I think that's a, a major issue. I think a lot of us who are on... Uh, are listening on this from this radio show understand that our phones we access everything on our phones and if you're not able to even have your phone or internet access how difficult that would be so I'm glad you highlighted that folks uh, highlighted that Chris and, and folks can hear that and the thing about what I like about PCs for people is that you know you talked about the 53,000 computers that you've handed out folks understand PCs for people reputation as solid, right? It's a solid reputation in community. And now you're partnering uh, with the city of Minneapolis. Kind of explain that a little bit, Chris. Yeah, exactly. So this new program, PCs for People's partnering with the city of Minneapolis, with Hennepin County, and with the Minneapolis Public Schools to launch a pilot program. And it's going to launch this spring, which we will, as you mentioned, offer a no-cost internet service to Minneapolis residents in two pilot areas. And those areas are going to be around um, Lake Street. There's one um, tower going up on Lake Street, and there's another one going up on Broadway. And those two areas will have a a mile radius around each. And it's part of a program um, to give a holistic approach to the communities to bridge uh, the digital divide and ensure uh, digital equity giving those residents the opportunity to succeed in in today's digital world, right? And this no-cost Internet will be provided for two years to people who sign up for this program. And this pilot program will be first come, first serve. Um, By partnering with the city of Minneapolis, we're providing a more affordable and a high-quality service with no contract, no background checks, and no hidden fees. We want to make this simple. And we're going to work through various community partners and existing relationships in these communities to offer the service where it's needed the most. Talking with Chris Cairo from PCs for People. Great information, Chris. Just to touch on some of the things that you said, no-cost Internet access for two years for people who sign up, right? First come first serve bases and and, in a minute I'm going to have you explain to people how they sign up. One of the biggest things that I I think that I I get out of this information that you're providing today is the fact that we're talking about no contract, no background check, 
and no hidden fees. Did I hear you when you said that right? You're correct. And and that's something that we've done in our programs from the beginning because we, we don't want to have barriers to people um, to get this access. I mean, there's a lot of programs out there, but some people just can't access them for the reasons you're mentioning. And so we've tried to eliminate those barriers every place we could. And I, I think that's that's great. So so get into it, Chris. How do I sign up? How do I get folks signed up? If I'm a, a, a parent with kids and I'm hearing this now, right, because when I hear pilot programs, that, that means something to me as well, too. And I want you to kind of explain that. But for two years, we're talking about that. How do I get signed up for this program? Okay, good. Um, So, first of all, yep, it is a pilot. So we're only in two areas of the city. We hope to be expanding that um, in in due time. So the two areas, again, around the John D. Davis Center, which is uh, 1250 Broadway Avenue, and also around the location 2215 East Lake Street. Each of those locations is going to have an antenna on their building that's going to provide this high-quality Internet. For about 100 people, 100 residents around each of those antennas, right? Uh, the simple criteria is you have to be within that coverage zone. Um, I'm going to say it again. No fees for this program. You just need to be within the coverage zone. Um, our goal is to make this high quality. So the one thing we're going to ask people who sign up for the pilot, and this is not a big ask, is that they participate in a series of surveys over the course of two years. Um, Those surveys will um, document their feedback on how things are going, and it's going to help us improve the service. And we always want to continue to improve the way people are able to um, access the Internet. And so that feedback is going to be very, very important for us. Um, Once people... Um, identify that they're within the coverage zone, and they can go on our website, and I'm going to give you the website. It's pcsforpeople.org slash WISP, W-I-S-P. pcsforpeople, spell it all out, .org slash WISP. You can go on the site and see if you're within that coverage zone, or if you feel more comfortable, call us at our customer service number, 216-352-5594. And we'll be happy to walk you through that and help you determine whether you're in the coverage zone. Once you get signed up, and it's a very simple process to sign up, then a free modem will be shipped to your home so you can set up the Internet access. Talking with Chris Cairo from PCs for People. If you want to ask Chris a question, please call 612-377-3456 just to unpack a little bit, of, little bit of this information, Chris, which is great. Now, I want folks to kind of understand uh, what you're talking about. We've got two antennas on different sides of town, right? So 100 residents each in that zone. So we're talking about a total of 200 folks that are eligible, first come, first serve, to sign up in that one-mile radius of those antennas. So we're talking about Broadway and we're talking about Lake Street, right? So we're talking about 200 total people, but 100 per antenna. And no cost, no hidden fees, no background checks. The only thing that is happening is a series of survey questions that you're gathering information regarding, I'm assuming like, you know, how has this been working? Um, does things need improvement? You're, just, you're asking those type of questions, I'm assuming, correct? Exactly. And so these are very short surveys. They're all designed to make sure that the service that they're getting um, is of a high quality and we want to get their feedback. So these won't be intrusive. They won't be long surveys, um, but they're going to provide us with the needed information to improve um, our product. Yeah. And and that's just a question I think people are thinking about, like, okay, well, are you going to inundate me with a bunch of calls, a bunch of questions, get on my nerves (laughs) <laughs> interrupt my dinner, you know, my kids got to go somewhere. I mean, those are just type of questions because a lot of times I think our com- our community feels that sometimes everything that's free isn't good, right? So just want to make sure that, that you explain that this is not something that you're going to be, you know, just dis- disrupting people's lives with three pages of questions, Chris. So just wanted to make no, the- I want short and to the point, 
uh, Anthony. We don't want to make this burdensome at all. Again, our whole goal is to make Internet access easy and affordable, and the easy part means we're going to keep it simple, keep the questions to a minimum, but those questions are very important for us to be able to get feedback and to improve the service. Okay. Um, one of the things I wanted to kind of transition to is like, when I ask you this question, I think about the elders in our communities, right? And, and folks who are getting a modem and, and don't necessarily how to know how to understand how, to, how the modem works, where to place it, what buttons to push, you know? So, I, I mean, I, I know our young people and a lot of even the younger, our younger kids know how to do all of this stuff even better than me. And I wouldn't consider myself an elder, but if I'm thinking of, of my elders and, and I need assistance, right? How, how, can, how can I get assistance when this modem comes to my house? Great question. Um, you know, I have to turn sometimes to my, my niece, my teenage niece for assistance on things. Um, we all need assistance at times. Um, First of all, let me assure you that the modems that we send out are fairly easy to use. They're fairly easy to install. But if people wind up with questions or problems and they can't get it done, they can simply call our customer service line and we'd be happy um, to walk them through it. And again, that number, 216-352-5594. And you can also go to that website, Chris, and you had talked about it before, pcsforpeople.org slash WISP, W-I-S-P. Uh, and again, we're talking with Chris Cairo from PCs for People. Folks, I hope you uh, got some of this information down about free Internet access, no hidden fees, no background checks. Are there any other eligibility requirements, Chris? No, simply you need to be within that coverage zone. I, I will also add that some people might be in that covered zone and said, well, I don't even have a computer, and we can help them with that too. PCs for people um, can provide them with computers. Currently, there's a federal program, the ACP program, the Affordable Connectivity Program, which offers eligible families and individuals a $100 discount on computers. And you can find more about this on our website as well um, at pcsforpeople.org slash low cost internet slash ACP. And I'd recommend people take a look at that program if they don't currently have a computer in their house and they want to be able to connect because connection means you have to have a computer and you have to have that internet connection, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I'm glad you said that because I was kind of going to go down that road. Like there's going to be a lot of folks that are left out, right? right? Just to, just to be like super honest, you know, a hundred sounds great. You know, if the numbers that we had talked about earlier, like the 31,000, you know, that that doesn't even scratch the surface of, of folks, you know, who need, you know, computers and Internet access. But I just want you to kind of talk a little bit about your, your services because of those folks who a aren't in that coverage area on either side. Right. So what again, uh, just talk more about that. What can PCs for people do for those folks who aren't in that in that zone and those coverage areas, Chris? Sure. Well, first of all, the city of Minneapolis has a lot of programs, too, to help people get connected. So, And, and you can go to the, the city websites to get more information on those. But at PCs for People, we do connect a lot of people to the Internet through hotspots. And we offer those hotspots. Um, and you can come into either our retail location on Marshall Avenue or go online to our website to uh, learn how you can purchase um, a hotspot and connect that way as well. Um, this is a pilot program, and yes, it's a very limited program to test out this, uh, this program, but we're not sitting still. We are already looking at other spots within the, within the city, within the surrounding communities that we know that there's a big need, and we are looking at how we can put up additional antennas to be able to service a larger portion of the population. Um, and we're targeting those areas that are really affected by the digital divide and, and don't have an equitable um, access to uh, broadband. And those are the, the people we're going to we're going to work with to make sure that they get equitable access. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm I'm glad you you talked about that, Chris. You know, when I learned about this project uh, from my colleague Chelsea McFerrin, 
and had some conversations uh, with myself and also my, my other colleagues. There's a, a lot of great stuff in this, but just some of the, the concerns that I, that I think that, that, that we had touched on was the fact that there's a, a lot of folks uh, being left out. But if you've got some ways that, that folks can get the help that they need to, to, to help those other 31,000 people, I, I think is great. Uh, as we as we wrap up this show, Chris, with a, with a with a couple of minutes left, just to 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 give some you a chance to just kind of talk about PCs for People's mission and why has that been important for for you and your organization? And you talked a little bit about it before, and I appreciate the the personal story, uh, you know, about the Taco Bell. But but why is this important for for you and PCs for People? What makes this a mission of yours? You know, um, it started off um, many years ago with um, our founder giving a computer to a single student who was troubled and needed some guidance, and it helped change that kid's life. And uh, when he looked at that and said, I, I changed someone's life by simply giving them a computer, he said, how can I help other people? And he started giving away computers and noticed the impact that it had. And that blossomed into a full mission and how our nonprofit started. And we do believe that, and, and I talked about, you know, the four or five different areas where having digital access makes such a big deal in our life. Things that we sometimes take for granted because we have that, and there are people who don't. And I shudder to think of how you can find a job without being online. Right? How do you do that these days? You can't. Right? So you're at a disadvantage. And we don't think anybody should be disadvantaged in our day and age and not have access to Internet, right? not have that digital access, the ability to communicate with people, the ability to apply for jobs, the ability to look up um, health information. Right? These are critical things in people's lives, and we're committed to making sure that they have the access they need so that it's an equitable access, affordable access. And sometimes that affordability and um, the quality means, right, taking down those barriers. And that's why we've made these programs as simple as possible for people to uh, sign up for. And, and is this live now, Chris, so folks can, can get on that website? Is this live? They can sign up now? They can sign up now. The pilot program will commence this spring, but they, we are pre-signing up people now. Okay. Okay. I appreciate you, Chris. I mean, this was, this was great. I, I, I think a lot of folks got some information about that today. Uh, hopefully we'll get those 200 people signed up here like ASAP, right, to get this kind of started. So appreciate you coming on today, Chris. Thank you. Anthony, thanks, Chris. thanks for your interest and thanks for having me. Thank you. Kim, what's your thoughts? I think that it's amazing. Um, there's so many people, like you said, who either don't have Internet and then need it, and so just the ability to be able to help people out, you know, to me, I always feel is a blessing. So I'm just glad that we're able to give this information to families, you know, in Minneapolis who could use the assistance. And so I just want to encourage all of the listeners to spread the word, you know, let your friends and family know because it is here. And the only way that people won't know about it is if you don't share the information. That's the honest to God's truth. PCs for people, y'all. P pcsforpeople.org slash W-I-S-P. Get signed up. And if you know somebody, like Kim said, please share that information out. Uh, yeah. Because super right, man. You you cannot even, you can't access this world without internet. You can't access it without, without a computer or a phone. Yep. Yeah. And it's great that they are also going to assist you in getting a computer if you need it. So I think that's, that's amazing that's, as well. And bro, I just want to make sure that you guys, un PCs is P C S. F O R P E O P L E dot org. And you can always call up to KMOJ as well if you still need more information on that site address. That's, that's why I love you, man, because I was just talking fast. <laughs> yes, hey, no, no, it's okay. I just want to make sure that they got it because this they, is good. Look, yeah. I wish I lived in Minneapolis. Yeah, I, I, I know that. I know that, right? <laughs> PCs, people be having my uh, application for real. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Minneapolis, it's good to be here. Good to be with you, Kim. Be well, everyone. I will see you in two weeks.